Today, we're gonna to recheck some of the valve lash on the Ford Ranger. Uh, this driver's side, definitely first two cylinders. There is too much lash on one or both of them. Um, so, while I get everything set up, uh, you can watch a quick clip of this running with the engine warming up and you'll be able to hear the valve lash coming from right up here. So, stay tuned, we'll be back. Okay, I got it to idle down a little bit. It's, you can see it's missing. You can hear possibly the tapping coming from one of these two cylinders. And I'm really hoping it's valve lash, but it might be hiding something deeper in the motor. So we're gonna get this up to operating temperature and we'll take that valve cover off and we will check the lash on those first two cylinders. I've already listened, it's not at the back, it's one of the first two. So we'll check it out in a moment. Okay, not the easiest valve cover in the world to get off, but not the hardest. I've got it off. The two cylinders we're concerned about are this one and this one. I've already ruled this one out, just listening. Um, so what we'll do is I'm going to roll the motor over by hand from the crankshaft. And just We're going to put a, a half-inch ratchet on the crankshaft, and we'll turn it so I can get these two freed up. You can hear that little bit. That is tappet noise, however, that may be normal. We don't know until we, we check. I looked at the specs on this. Um, it is 14 to 16 thousandths. Uh, I think 14 intake, 16 exhaust. I'm just doing them all at 15. Feeler gauge, 15 thousandths. I should be able to slide it in here with just some drag. That feels pretty good. This one, maybe a little tight, but we're going to roll the motor and make sure that that is all the way free already. Let's check over here. That's too tight, so that one's probably still not all the way free. That one is going down. Okay, so this one right now feels good. And we're just gonna turn the engine about a quarter turn at a time, and we'll check this each time uh, until we can get the maximum amount of lash we have on each one, and we'll adjust it down to 15. This one, intake is now down, so this should definitely be open all the way. Oh, yeah, that's a lot of lash. There's no drag there whatsoever. That's definitely part of our noise. So, while that one is free, I'm gonna go grab a wrench real quick. Uh, should be 7 16 I believe. I'm gonna go grab one and we will snug this one up and take care of the first of our four problem children. It doesn't take much on these, just a little bit at a time, not even an eighth of a turn. I mean, just getting it moving. And you can see we've got a little bit of drag, but we want a little bit more drag than that. So we'll go another on it like that. Oh yeah, I like that. That is good there. Now, what do we have for cylinder number four here? With everything freed up, that one, that one's a little loose. Oh, that one, I could, I could probably get 20 thousandths into that. That is horrible. All right, so we'll give this a couple and we should be able to take care of some of this noise. That's one, these are very tight. It's a, I think the threads on this are an interference fit because there's no actual lockout for it. Oh, just a little bit more. It's pretty close, but we're going to go. Um, sometimes on these, what you'll actually have is this, and then you'll have like an Allen wrench on the inside of it that will be the actual turn for it, but this is not. This is just a big threaded nut with a ball on the end of it that goes to the rocker arm. And that should be enough of a hook to get this to 15. Oh, yeah. I like that. That one's just a hair loose. I like that one. So let's, let's give this one... Just a little bit of a pull. Not much. 
Like I said, it doesn't take very much on this. Oh yeah, that's snugged. Okay, we're gonna roll another quarter turn. We'll come back and check them again. I'm gonna go all four each time. That one's, I could tighten that a hair. That one's starting to go down because I lost all my lash there. So, and this one, my exhaust valve is starting to open. That one is good. <sighs> and the intake valve on this one has started to come up, but there's zero lash, so that one is still going. I could snug, man, I could snug that just a little bit more. Quarter turn and check it again. And we're back. And that one, I may, I may still do that a little bit more. This one's down. This one, I like that. That's fine. This one might be up all the way. Oh man, yeah. Now that's another twenty thousand. That's too much. So there's another way to do this. It's slightly less time consuming. Well, maybe not even that. There's another way to do this. If I had both valve covers off, then what you would do is there's a phrase, it's EOIC. Exhaust opens. So when the exhaust opens, you check the intake. And IC, when the intake valve is closing, you check the exhaust. Which I could do, but I'm happy with doing quarter turn six or seven times and just making sure that I've got everything on the back side of the lobe. So basically each cam lobe looks sort of egg-shaped and the high point of the egg is when it's open and that low point the fatter bottom end of that egg is when it is closed there's a lifter that will ride on that so that would be a low point is the fatter end of that egg and I check it a lot because I don't know how the lobe widens out so I want to make sure that I've got it absolutely at the lowest point so that's why I just do this quarter turn at a time, and I'll check it five, six, seven times until I get it right. So, another quarter turn, check it again. And as I turn that, I don't know if you can hear the engine sort of hissing sometimes. That's compression you can hear. That one, see? That's why you do this multiple times. That one's a little, little, little too loose. Come back around to this one. Slower number four. Exhaust. Oh, just a snug. I like that. Okay. Better. Better, better, better. This one, I'm good with. All right, quarter turn. I think two more quarter turns, check them, and we should be good. All right, we are done. We're gonna throw this valve cover back on, we'll start it back up, and you know, maybe you can or can't hear the noise when I start it back up, but I'll be able to hear, and I'll let you know. So hang on, let me throw the valve cover back on. Just taking a quick break inside here where you can hear me a little bit better while that warms up outside i've got the valve lash just on the driver's side there's still a noise and it's a weird intermittent pingy noise and i don't think that it's the same thing that i was adjusting so i'll play you a little clip of the extra little pingy tangly noise um, and then i'll probably just put the camera down and try to figure out what that is um, because that could take a while but Hopefully, it's not deep in the motor. So, I'll find out, we'll get back to you. I don't know if you can hear that tapping, but that's what I really hope is valve left. Okay, it's a little cold blooded. Uh, not on the valve thing, it was not bad. So we are, we are good, there's no bottom end. It was just valve lash and a push rod that fell completely off. Probably due to a dead lifter uh, that has since pumped up, so. 
We're good to go. That's sort of how you do valve life. Could have done it better. Well, that was uh, that was something. That did not go as planned. That's even cold now. But we got our valve life adjusted. On the super duper upside of this, I was right. There is no bottom end engine noise. It was all valve lash. The big mystery is, did that push rod come out of there because the lifter was bled down and didn't pump up? Or is there something wrong with the lifter? So I, I guess we're going to have a little bit of a long-term thing. We're going to have to watch that cylinder. That was cylinder number, see passenger side, second one back. That was cylinder number two. Uh, seemed to be the big issue. So we'll keep an eye on that one. Everything looked fine. The push rods on that are not ones that are hollow. They are solid push rods. So there's no oil going through the middle. Uh, so it was not an oil issue. Uh, it was not bent. I did check it before I put it back in. So, you know, fingers crossed that that was the end of the noise for that engine. Um, like I said, it didn't go as planned, but it did get done. We'll see what happens next time. I'm going to clean all this up. See ya.